What's up guys? This is Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. I'm here in Denver and I wanted to go over the difference between sawdust spawn and grain spawn. So I've got um, some hydrated wheat that I inoculated a, about a week ago with some pink oyster. And then I also have some chestnut spawn that I inoculated two weeks ago. Um, it's a sawdust blend that I make in-house um, and I use a liquid culture with an injection port um, <clears throat> to inoculate that. So one of the differences right off the bat between the two different types of spawn is that the sawdust does take a little bit longer to colonize um, and you can tell that it's a little more clumpy. I like to just shake it up while it's colonizing. Um, that kind of helps to keep it unpacked, I guess. Um, I'll show you how I inoculate that into bags. And then this is the, the wheat that is fully colonized. Um, so these are a little bit easier to break apart. They have more weight to them than the sawdust. So that's one benefit. Um, when you're inoculating your bags is that it has a lot more weight to it so you can break it apart easier. Um, but one of the things that I've noticed and one of the main reasons why I switched to sawdust in the first place is that I believe that there's a lot less contamination. So the first time I ever used sawdust spawn was when I ordered a bunch of sawdust spawn from um, Fungi Perfecti by Paul Stamets. I had a bunch of pearl oyster mushrooms, and prior to that, I was dealing with about 15% contamination rates in the summer, and I inoculated about 30 bags and nothing contaminated. So that really grabbed my attention. Um, even, do, even doing batches like this, I get about 3% contamination um, for my grain spawn, where I did a batch of 80 of these and none of them are contaminated. So it's kind of a debate between what is worth it, um, the contamination or the time that you save um, between making batches of spawn. So in my experience, the, uh, the grain spawn is a little faster. It's about a week's faster of colonization time, but then again, this is a larger jar. So comparatively, it could take about 10 to 12 days in a half pint like this compared to a week. So if that does add up over time, you can definitely get more batches of spawn per year if you're using grain. But from my, my trials, um, the sawdust is a lot less contamination. So I'm gonna go downstairs in the lab and I'll show you how I inoculate these. What's up guys, I'm downstairs in the lab and I'm about to inoculate um, this small batch of bulk substrate with my pink oyster mushroom spawn and some chestnut um, spawn that is made out of sawdust. So I'll set up my hood here and I'll show you um, kind of from the bird's eye view of how I inoculate my bags and then I'll make some conclusions about what I prefer, which I mean, this is what I use normally. I'm just kind of experimenting with the wheat um, spawn just to see if there's any differences in you know procedure or um, if there's any reason why I'd want to switch over. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on that and clean out the hood. All right. So I've got the hood set up. It's nice and clean, and I've got my two different types of uh, spawn here. So this is my sawdust spawn and this is my grain spawn. So I'll just start by um, showing you how I break these up. It's not an ideal method because these glass um, jars could be cracked or damaged during sterilization and you can cut your, the palm of your hand by doing this. But I'm just gonna go ahead and break it up real quick to show you. Um, there's other methods that, for doing that. Um, you can use a, a rubber tire or something that's firm enough that's not going to break the glass and that won't puncture yourself. So proceed with caution. Um, 
All right, so you can see how nicely that this breaks up and it's nice and free. Um, it'll be easy to pour out where this is the sawdust spawn that um, it's a little bit harder to break up and you'll see that it will kind of remain clumpy, um, which that has less points of inoculation. So when I put this into my bulk substrate bags, um, this is going to have a lot more spread out points of contact, which um, I'm not sure if it will help speed up colonization or not, but I'll go ahead and just show the difference between how I inoculate my bags. So this is a bulk substrate that I make. Um, I use all locally sourced sawdust, especially in my, um, or as well as my grain spawn. Um, so I, I'll use like a local blend depending on the species. I think this is an ash and a silver maple in here. But I'll go ahead and open this up. So whenever I'm inoculating my bags, I'm making sure that I'm holding the gussets from the outside. You never want to touch the inside of the bag because that could lead to contamination. So I'm grabbing the corners opposite of each other. So I'm opening this up under my laminar flow hood carefully and you can kind of see the inside there so I'm going to take my green spawn that I just broke apart of this pink oyster mushroom and then I'm going to gent gently just dump that right in there so that poured in you know very easily um, it will be fairly easy to mix this up so when I'm closing up my bag I will hold my gussets and then I always do two heat seals just to be safe um, it's not really necessary to extract the air out of the bag you almost want like a pillow of air so when you're mixing up it uh, it will spread out the grain easier um, but I'll go ahead and double seal that just in case. Now there's many different ways to seal. Um, some people don't like using the gusset, but I just like the clean, clean look of that seal. Um, it's nice and nice and tight. And then basically I just go ahead and massage this in. Some people, they will um, use an automatic bag mixer, but doing it by hand is kind of, there's less risk in puncturing the bag. And I'm just taking my thumb and kind of pushing that spawn all over the bag and just mixing it in there. Um, I probably could have had a little bit more air in this bag and it, it would have been looser, but You can just see that that spawn's really just getting mixed in. Um, and it's kind of clumping up like near the top. But that's okay. Um, usually I'll observe my bags after about two or three days, um, it's good to see a little cluster of spawn here. So I can watch the health of the spawn, make sure there's no contamination. And then I'll usually observe, you know, lower parts of the bag here to see if any mold is starting. Um, and if that happens, I just discard and move on. But um, it'll be nice to see the difference between this grain bag versus the sawdust bag. So I'll go ahead and label this one. Um, pink, oyster, grain, wheat, and then today's date.
So it won't be a, a full comparison because um, this is going to be a chestnut mushroom, which these usually take about four or five days longer to colonize anyway. But um, if you're running this experiment at home, you should probably be doing two of the same species. I just had some extra pink oyster liquid culture, so I decided to go with that. But now I can show you how I inoculate my sawdust which it is very similar all right so I'll just repeat the same process grabbing the corners of the gussets and then carefully opening that top um, you can see what the sawdust looks like in there but another thing that I consider of one of the reasons why I use my sawdust is that the nutrients of the mycelium or the compounds that they're exuding are already kind of dialed into the sawdust so there's very little lag time whereas in the past when I've messed around with green I feel like it takes a few days for that mycelium to launch off where um, using this sawdust it doesn't really have to adjust to a, a new substrate so I'll go ahead and seal this bag up um, I don't know if that's true or not it's kind of just what I observed oh, a little bit hot on that one So another good way to double check that that seal is good is you squeeze the bag and if you can't hear anything coming out then you know that it's sealed. Even though there's a little bit of uh, a burn right, right at the top, it still has a really good seal. So I'll just go ahead and start mixing in my sawdust. Like I said, there's better ways to do this, but I like to preserve every bag and by doing it by hand, I'm ensuring that there's no holes that are being punctured. And I'm kind of working it from this, the top towards the corner with my thumb, almost like kneading bread or if you ever made pizza dough, it's very similar. All right, so I can see that my sawdust is blended in there really well. And I just like to kind of pack down the substrate into a nice block. Especially with oysters, um, if there's ever like little crevices like that um, you'll start to see pinning premature pinning so it's important before you store your bags that you really pack them in all right so there's my uh, sawdust spawn here so I'll keep my eye in that region just to make sure that it starts to take off and then I'll just label this guy. And there you have it. Okay guys, so I hope you liked my demonstration on how I inoculate my bags. Um, I would like your guys' opinion on what you think about the differences between grain and sawdust and what you use or what you think would be the better method. Um, I'll keep an eye on these and I'm going to start doing some more um, yield experiments to see if there's any benefit of the grain versus the sawdust on yield because that would ultimately be another factor. But I hope you enjoy my videos. Um, uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Um, like this video if you found it useful and share them if you think anyone else will find these useful. I appreciate 
your time and much love.